Hey, welcome to Del Mar's Music and Sound. Don't forget, <laughs> don't forget to hit like and subscribe. So, this is going to be a guitar cable review here. Three different cables. A um, couple weeks ago, I was looking for a new guitar cable. The one I've had, I've used, I don't know probably 20 years. That's this cable here, right? And uh, not sure, not quite sure where I got it. Um, second cable here I've used probably for about three years. It's relatively new. This third cable comes from a company called BP Cables. So a few weeks ago I rolled out a, an email to several cable companies asking, well, what's so great about your cable? You know, uh, tell me about it. And there was only one response. Brian from BP Cables said, hey, I'll tell you all about it. In fact, I'll give you, I'll send you a cable. So Brian from BP Cables down in Knoxville, Tennessee, sent me a cable to review. I'm going to do this review in two parts. This first part is kind of a, cable overview um, of the cable I've used for many years. One that I've had in my as a backup for probably two or three years. Doesn't get the same amount of usage. And the one BP sent me. So let's take a look at this first cable. You know, guitar players, <laughs> they're, they're, they're cheap and uh, they buy cheap ass cables, right? And this particular cable here, let me just show you this connection here. I have no idea where I got that from. It's your standard quarter inch cable. In fact, it's got a big old divot in it <laughs> in the side here. Um, it's got a spring tension on it. It's about 15 and a half feet long. Uh, let me start by that. Each one of these is is 15 foot between 15 foot and 15 and a half feet. So this first one's 15 feet. It's your standard thickness. In fact, um, let me do something real quick here. I'll grab my caliper just so we can get a feel for what we're looking at here. This particular cable thickness for, we'll call it cable one, is 270 thousandths, just over a quarter inch. Um, I measured, measured the resistance tip to tip on this cable, um, just, just to show you um, what we have. And the overall resistance is 1.7 ohms across the 15 foot length, which I find kind of high. <laughs> Uh, for this cable. Um, however, you're not sending large amounts of current through that. It's millivolts, but as you know, millivolts can really be tampered with. So one of the other things that, I, that is critical in, in cable is um, cable impedance. The, the BP cable touts a specific impedance level, so I was out there looking at who um, has the lowest impedance cable because the higher the impedance, obviously the more signal, signal loss and, and upper end you're going to lose. Um, this particular cable had a, an impedance rating per foot, and we're going to talk about per foot impedance in this, of 39.3, which uh, is pretty much standard. Um, from what uh, my, my observations and readings were. So that's, that's cable number one. It's, it's probably 30 years in existence, this particular cable. It's a little over a quarter inch in diameter. And it's, it's, it's got an overall ohm reading, like I say, length, 1.7 ohms, with a impedance of 39.3. Cable number two, is a cable I, I picked as a backup. It's from a local music store here, and it has uh, 
their name and phone number on it. It's a quarter inch cable. It's got some heat shrink on it here. Um, nothing fancy. This particular cable is uh, 0.243 in diameter. 2.245 quarter inch standard cable. This particular cable, uh, 15 and foot three quarters, 15 three quarters of a foot. It came in at real low, uh, tip to tip resistance, um, 0.6 ohms, under an ohm, which is really good. I also noticed on the tip of this, it's uh, solid copper. Um, nothing fancy about this. I've never, re I've eaten any of these cables I've never repaired. I've left them original. Um, the overall impedance on this is um, in picofarads. The last cable was 39.3 picofarads. This cable is 34 picofarads. So it, it, both of these cables are falling in within the range of your typical cable. Now here's the BP cable. Uh, I must say, real nice outer shield on it. Um, it, it it's real tough. It, it's going to stand up to the rigors if you drop a monitor on it or you know, you're on stage um, moving stuff around and step on it or, or you set something on it or you set a road case on it. It is a weaved nylon outer cable. The tip looks like solid brass. It does have a nice heat shrink going back, you know, probably two inches. Um, very well made. Let me zero this out. And the outside diameter is a little bit bigger, 0.315 of an inch. Um, Overall resistance tip to tip on this is 0.4 ohm, so it's under a half a ohm. And again, this is a 15 footer. Um, the other one's like 15 foot six inches, and the other one's like 15 foot seven inches, so 15 and a half. However, the pico farads that they advertise for this cable is right around 20. That's the advertisement on BP Cable site. Um, this one came in at 29 picofarads per foot. Um, so you measure your overall picofarads, 439 uh, divided by 15 foot, you come up with 29 picofarads. It's got a nice knurled, uh, nice knurling here if you want to unscrew this and take it apart if you do have to repair it, but they got a pretty good guarantee, Brian assures me over at BP Cable. Uh, it coils very nice, um, stacks very nice. It was shipped in a very nice box. Um, me measurement wise, I was using a, for resistance readings, a Fluke 87, okay? Not using a cheap meter and using my capacitance meter, zero it out. Uh, to check capacitance, you know, picofarads per foot. Um, what else can I tell you? The test I want to run for part two is comparing cable A, cable B. You know, cable A, we'll call it my 30-year cable. Cable B, we'll call it my backup cable, which doesn't get much usage. And then cable C, which is going to be the BP cable. Um, what I want to do is compare the sound of those three along with checking any inductive coupling where, you know, as you know on stage, you may have AC lines laying along the stage to plug your amps in. So I'm going to be running these next to some uh, AC current lines just to see, just to check shielding on them. I'm more interested in, in what we hear you know, in the lower picofarad cable across the 15 foot length for resolution for high end loss uh, or gain, I should say, or lack of in, in comparing these three cables. I had thought about going out and purchasing three or two brand new cables, 
But as you know, and I mentioned earlier, guitar players are more apt to compare th this cable, the new cable they have, with what they're currently using, which is a, could be a relatively good cable or a beat up hunk of junk. So with that said, I had a busy weekend this weekend, so I can't get to part two till probably next week. But uh, take a look at this, and if you have any suggestions, right? I'm going to post this on YouTube, but if you hit, and, and I'll post the link on uh, the BP chat, right? And if you have any suggestions on what else you'd like to hear, let me know. I'm going to use a uh, Fender Tweed amp uh, in my music room, and uh, I'll use a uh, large condenser mic. I'm interested in what we hear recording-wise. I think it'll have provide more fidelity than let's say an SM57 or SM58. I'll give it a listen first and if I think it has a better resolution on a 58 or, or a 57 or a Sennheiser 906 in front of the amp or you know large condenser, I'll go with that. Um, just another thing I'd like to mention, these measurements, when I took these, these three cables were kept at room temperature in here at about 72 degrees. So I know, you know, resistance changes and, and uh, depending upon temperature. So anyhow, that's it from Delmar's Music and Sound. I hope you enjoyed this. Hit like and subscribe. And uh, until next week when we do the review, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll await your questions and uh, we'll go from there. Have a good day.